you're you're not just so gifted for the opportunity to lead not just one not just one enlisted Marine or any O three to understand that with you, brother. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And we spoke about this last time, right, Jamil? Dude. Pressure. How old were you again? Twenty five? Twenty six? How old were you, Jack? Twenty three. But they taught me everything. I was standing there. They taught me everything. I mean, I, I was the fourth of six kids, and I didn't get shit kicked for the wrong reasons. Like, I didn't get, I wasn't put in the middle of the circle to learn how to fight. You know, without learning how to fight. Like, my squad leaders, my fire team leaders, like, the junior enlisted, like, they literally, they, they taught me <laughs> how to be, like, I didn't know how to be a platoon commander without, like, without them, I don't know, not just without them, they, they knew how to fight. I, and they knew how to lead. I had a bachelor's degree and I went to OCS. And so we had a platoon. And so together we had three squads three fire teams, a platoon sergeant, and a platoon commander. Mm -hmm. And who was going to, and a platoon sergeant, who was going to fucking, who was going to work together, who wasn't? Who was going to work together and who wasn't? And it was like, I felt like my job, my job, if it was my job, my job was my job was to do nothing but listen and learn. Did you hear this? Yeah. Hopefully it's important. No, did you hear it? I heard what Benny said. My job was to learn and listen. There you go. Yeah. That's good. Good. That was it. Open oh, humility. That was it. Yes. Yeah. It's servant leadership. It's total. Yeah. Yeah. Doing this, right? And it's beautiful, man, when you play the game at that level. And that's what we we're talking about, general pattern, right? You need that intimacy, right? Which is intellectual, conceptual. You understood and saw the battlefield the way the 18 year old kids did not. And your contribution to the team was the relationship that you had to the concepts and to the understanding. That is what you brought to the team, right? You were standing on on a ladder, looking at things from a different perspective, right? The officer on the fucking hill with the binoculars calling in for the support fucking fire, right? That's what you bring, right? And, man... <laughs> See, but I wasn't that... And it's such a beautiful contribution, right? And and but I, I wasn't that. Man. Mm -hmm. I wasn't that though. I I and I am humbled that you say that. That wasn't. I don't know. Maybe someone. Maybe maybe my Marines or maybe others would say different. But I never. I don't think I was ever that person on the hill. I don't think I was ever the one on um, calling in. I, I don't think I was 
the one that was, I was, uh, I was there. I was there in the trenches. I was there in the fire. That's where I wanted to be. That's where I needed to be. That's where I wanted to be. That's where I had to be. I've said before, and I'll say it the day I die, I was, I've never been more in my element than I was in combat. Absolutely. I was fucking in my zone. 100%. Yeah. You know, I was fucking in my element. But you don't think, you don't do, you, you just fucking move. Yes. You just fucking go. Absolutely. You know it, man. <laughs> you just fucking move. <laughs> Like so, so things just move. You just go, it's so and it's so beautiful like that. Yeah. It's and it's not perfect. Things aren't perfect, but it's 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 perfect in that I know that he he's going to do this. He knows that I'm going to do that, and I know that he's going to. He knows that I know that he thinks that I'm going to do that. I know that he thinks that I know that he thinks that I'm going to do that. So I know that he thinks that I know that he thinks that I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do this. Absolutely. You know? Yes. And that's that beautiful, and that's that beautiful fucking touch, you. Exactly. It's just... And that's the fucking... And that's... And, and that's... And the only... They're the only part is obviously for me, just personal, mm -hmm. is that obviously because I had seizures, I couldn't go back twice. Just, just saluting and seeing brothers go forward and not all come back was my greatest guilt as anyone would with any heart <laughs> anyone would have guilt as anyone would as anyone would so i say that not to spare or Take away from where courage down range lies, not lie, lay in the enlisted Marine, in the enlisted, in the enlisted, in the enlisted, O oh, three, in the enlisted, O oh, three. So and they enlisted. If you are not an enlisted O3, you're in support. <laughs> if you are not an enlisted O3, you're in support. Let's, um, so, is, is Steve in prominent and something? To for these times and so, something for so twenty years, for something for twenty years, for twenty years, for our time, for all of our time, and for something that I'm going to take just one more minute to mark. For all of those, for all of those, for your, for how much, how much blood has been shed for how much time has been invested how much money has been invested domestically internationally in different nations for different reasons and for all those families their sons were lost or their husbands were lost or their fathers were lost 
and they got nothing more than one hour or a half an hour or a day or 20 minutes of a, hey, here comes, here comes a casket, that sacrifice, and then it's forgotten. Yet their sacrifice continues. Today, fucking today, their sacrifice today, absolutely, today, in the flesh. And I don't want to say there's no thank you. We're right there with you, buddy. Early on. Well, help help me. Uh, do you feel like there's a thank you? Yeah. Is there a thank you? I think so. I think so. A little bit. I, I and feel I'm, like and I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm I'm being optimistic. I'm saying it in a positive way. You know, it's deep. It's a deep. It's a deep question. It's deep. So many layers. And I, I want to provide a thank you. <clears throat> the sacrifice continues. Like one of the things that motivated me, I was like, I used to, I used to be on guard at night. Behind a 50 cal, even fucking patrolling with the rifle, with the saw, sitting on a tower all night. Like, fuck, dude. In the middle of fucking nowhere, dude. Like, there was nothing stopping fucking Hodge from ambushing us, dude. Nothing, man. Like, you know, so that was like our biggest fear, right? And then, uh, I think I told you guys last time, uh, three of our guys got ambushed. By like 40 fucking dudes. One got killed on the spot, left there. Two got kidnapped and tortured for like a week. <sighs> tortured, dude. And then uh, it was it was crazy. It, the CIA was there, the FBI. I mean, SEALs. Everyone who was anyone was there trying to look for these guys, right? So we fucking... Turned everything within like a 10 mile radius upside down. I mean, we fucking tore everything up, right? They quickly posted videos online of these soldiers being tortured. It was crazy. So we're like fucking animals, right? We didn't sleep the whole week. We're just fucking like rabid fucking dogs, right? Yeah. And we tore up all. What was this? Uh, oh, 05. Yeah. yeah. We tore up a lot, dude. Fucking looking for these guys, right? So then we uh, we finally found them like a week later, booby trapped and stuff, beheaded. Yeah. It was fucking gruesome, man. But what was equally fucking crazy was that, <clears throat> and I told the story last time, right? Uh, but a squad of our guys fucking raped and killed uh, mm. a, a, a 14 year old girl mm. and her family fucking shot him up burned him so that act was vengeance for this yeah and we're we're like of course of yeah. course and it took so long to build those relationships right and at that time we we didn't have a God damn. a platoon commander because our platoon commander got his face blown off the first day we, we fucking landed there. Boots on the ground. I think within an hour, fucking IED went up on his face. So oh, he man. was out. We didn't have a platoon commander for eight months. And that was day one. So we went eight months without one. So our platoon sergeant was acting as both. Yeah. So our leadership was just, right? Yeah. But he, Bug, man. he did an amazing job. Eight months in, we got a 22, 23-year-old kid from West Point. I just graduated from Ranger School. 
<laughs> like you still have pimples and stuff, right? <laughs> she got there with the clean uniform, oh, clean like, boots, and we're like, <laughs> at that time, they were 18, 19. You never know. 18, 19, never know. 20 year old kids, right? Like, we have been in Iraq for eight months fighting, dude. God damn. Hard, hard. hard right? but where were you? Uh, Southwest Baghdad. Like the Triangle of the Death. The Triangle of Death. Yeah, right. Where, um, where, uh, uh, um, the Marine from, uh, our previous Agathon. Uh, Team Rubicon, right? Team Rubicon. Yeah. Uh, Jake sure. Wood. Uh, Jake dude, we Jake Wood was in, the team. was in this. He, oh, Jake Wood shit. calls it the, the Triangle of Death as well. Yeah. We, we should sit with that guy and fucking shoot the shit. Dude. For dude. sure. For sure. He would tell us oh, stories. So he, he was, was there at the same time. Yeah, Jake was mm-hmm. in Triangle was of Death. Yeah, Triangle of Death is what it's called. Holy fuck. That's what it's called. This area Dude, of operation. So, yeah. So his book. Yeah. What? Uh, once a Marine. One, or, no, uh, Once a Leader. Or. Uh, uh, come on, Jamil, you should know this. No. Um, <laughs> Jamil's like, I'm too uh, drunk for this shit. Like, drinking since um, 4 a.m. Look no, what, what, what is it? Chat uh, GPT, man. You guys are lagging. Yeah, no. Um, Raw technology. Once a warrior. Once a warrior. Uh, yeah. There you go. Once a warrior. That's what he Era. talks about. Yeah, yeah. Era. Once a warrior. He was in the Triangle of Death. Yeah. Dude, which is 100%. not which is not let's, mainstream. Yeah, let's get together. Yeah. It's not mainstream. Well, I downloaded it. You got the book, but. What? I mean, that's all I need. Once a warrior, <laughs> th- that You're like that's all I need. <laughs> that story that's is all I need. <laughs> that story is not mainstream. I'm, I'm trying to look for a song. Once a warrior, I yeah. Wanna, I want to play something. something, something. By the way, Bumble app looks a lot like Audible. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do I want to read a book or do I want to look for hot <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I hope dude. this fucking app is fucking recording so, uh, this shit. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so, 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 so check it out, dude. Right? So we had all that drama, right? And then our fob, we yeah, I think I told you guys, right? A uh, National Guard unit was there, so they were just there surviving. They wouldn't even patrol anymore. Yeah. They yeah, couldn't even. Exactly. They couldn't even take a just fucking surprise, yeah. dude. They were just holding on for dear life. Yeah, yeah. So we relieved them. So from day one, we're like, "Fuck it, we're getting there. We're walking out of the wire, and we're gonna see what the fuck." Happens. Which is dangerous as fuck. IEDs, fucking trucks oh, yeah. getting fucked up. We got ambushed. We're like, "What the fuck is going on?" Right. So then we're like, "All right, regroup. Okay, how can we do fucking better? What are we gonna do?" Obviously, there was a plan going in, but the plan goes out the window as soon as you fucking boots are on the ground. The plan's going to go out out the fucking window, right? But at least we have a framework through our education as to what framework we can apply to any situation, right? Right? And that's what leadership brings to the table, right? Because if no one knows how to organize people and move men, you're fucking useless, right? Yep. So that is the strength of an officer, right? Because you are trained all those managerial, operational, and tactical skills to apply to any situation and execute a project, a fucking war, right? A battle, right? And so we had to do that, man. We had to explore out there. We had to secure other fobs locally. We had to gain more fucking ground around the area, right? And one of our major tasks was to uh, guard a major supply route. <laughs> and fuck, uh, dude. You were either patrolling, you were either fucking patrolling. It's recording. All right. You were either uh, patrolling, securing the fucking fob, or running missions. To yeah. fucking snatch motherfuckers up, get yeah. intelligence. Set up little sniper nest over there, over watching a road or something, right? Because a lot of IEDs. Every time we tried to drive, yeah. you know, we would get blown up. We couldn't. You know, Us on the wire. Out of the wire, man. Like, we had to take the fight out. 
Yeah. The, the worst part about it is like you have to go out and and attack when when it's like the the last thing you want to do is go out and attack because it's like you can sit back you can sit back but in order to build bring them over it, here, in yeah dude a hundred percent like, like, dude, just bring those chips over here, man. He's like, eighty one. <laughs> bring sitting those down. chips, then dip over here, Mike. Dude, he got up and he ate one. <laughs> he sat, and then he went back for one. He's like, I'm gonna exercise my. <laughs> Yo, for 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 you, if you if you listen to this, if you listen to this, <laughs> for you who maybe listen to this. We've got some chips and dip, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got some uh, wings, and uh, yeah, I don't have any. Uh, it, well, we've got toilet paper. <laughs> That's it. But did you don't? You can only when you can't when you're left to just security patrols. Mm-hmm. When you're left to just security patrols Mm -hmm. that's it it's like you can only look outside and say fuck man you know what i've i'm literally just saying you're frozen uh, yeah dude i'm i'm frozen i'm i'm actually yes dude i'm i am frozen here I'm, it's like, I can't leave my apartment. I can't leave my house. I can't leave here. And that's, uh, that's, I can't, I, my patrols, I can't do it. And, and, and that's how that unit was, right? And that's, they were like, okay, we're going to send these guys in and they're going to clean up the area and they're going to expand our territory out. Yes. You guys are the fucking... Some of the best Man, what a fucking applicable! It was, dude. So, so that area was very strategic for them, right? Because the fighters. How big of a team did you have? We were a company. A company yeah. So how big? You know, Thirty-six, a hundred was support. Maybe a hundred ish. I don't know the exact number. Yeah, right. yeah. But um, where was I? What happened to the dip? <laughs> it's right here, bro. <laughs> Our guys started to get injured really fast. Yeah. Within the first month, we had dudes with blown arms, lost eyesight, shot. Were you guys like walking? Like we were walking, walking like we were walking. would would walk and like would not walk. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. literally step in the step. Oh, yeah. yeah. So one of our other jobs was, like I told you guys, to guard the, the main this documentary supply itself. route. So we used to patrol back and forth. The supply. But we're talking about, I don't fucking know how many miles, dude. It's an impossible fucking task, especially with the men you have there. And it is an impossible task, right? And we had one platoon every like mile. With fucking night vision, machine guns, almost pointing at each other, making sure that no IEDs were placed on the road. Right? In the morning, we had to clear the road before the fucking other units could pass by, or tanks, or supply. It was very strategic, right? Fucking water and food travel through there, right? And without that, men cannot fucking fight. But even then, I would say six to seven per out of ten times. I'll get blown up, dude. It was an impossible fucking task, right? And a lot of the time, we used to walk in the middle of the fucking road to see if there was IV. Man. They were like, fuck it, we have to do it, motherfuckers. And the fields are right there in the way. Yeah. Ugh, let's go. Fuck it, dude. Let's do it, right? And we did what we had to do, man. And fucking shit. It's a fucking. But we did it. When I arrived to the 101st Airborne, 
that were just getting back from invading Iraq. They spent 13 months there, dude. So when I got out of boot camp and I arrived, we almost arrived at the same time. Wow. So these guys, they were the latest and greatest upgraded fucking soldiers, dude, that had just been out there, right? So I learned everything from them. And then we deployed. So they were home for a year and then we deployed for another year, right? So that was the rotation they were in. I have friends that spent six, seven years in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. They have so many fucking stripes, dude. Because we get a stripe for every six months. And the army deploys for a year at least. Yes. Some of them spent 18 months, dude, straight over there, right? But, uh, so those guys came and that's a batch of guys that I deployed with, man. So those guys had just been there, man, right? And it was, it was intense, but we got, that fucking hard love, hate of fucking motherfuckers. We were just there and learn from us, but we also fucking love you, right? Because we want you to stay alive. We got that uh, nourishment, and you know those were my leaders in Iraq, right? They're like, dude, we we're just here fucking fourteen yeah. months ago, right? Just follow me and fucking, you know, you'll fucking catch on, right? And there, yeah. yeah, and so you know. Uh, First uh, deployment, they established a huge patrol base in Mosul. So they started in the south, 101st spearheaded all through the middle, all the way to the fucking north, dude. Air assaulting in in helicopters and walking in the desert with fucking full mop gear, dude. Fuck. In 125 degree <laughs> weather. Fuck that. These guys were the ones I learned from, right? And those uh, were my leaders in Iraq, dude. So, so we were blessed and, and we were very humble through through their experience but it was it was tough man it was a tough fucking love man because you know, can you imagine like <laughs> these guys brought all that energy back right and fuck dude it was it was crazy it was chaotic man but that's the same fucking unbelievable that's the same energy that kept us alive over there and pushing the fucking fight right what better unit to bring back than these guys and rest them up, retrain them? What things did we learn? What things can we do better? How are we going to integrate our learnings into our, our movements and our maneuvers and our communication and our strategy, right? We learned the soldier, the enemy we've been, you know. So all that training, man, we were getting a lot of new training because all of that was, all that information was coming back and the Army educational infantry training, it was just evolving, right? Based on the needs of. So it's crazy, man. It's a crazy fucking time, but we were. So, uh, so uh, we had like our main fob where like maybe there was uh, 40 guys at any given time. Yeah. But, but we also had maybe like 50 or 60 uh, Iraqi soldiers with us. Yeah. So those guys used to help us patrol, but they're useless, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we used to drag them, and we used to carry the rucksack because those guys would give up sometimes. Yeah, like I and I, yeah. and, yeah. They were, and they were like, a &A. "What the fuck?" Yeah, like A and A was they used to, Afghan They used yeah. to touch us. I, 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 I they used to touch us, I and they used to talk. Why are you guys made out of? What the fuck? How Bro, do you guys man. fight like that? How yeah. do you guys not sleep? And they were like. <laughs> That's the mess, that's the mess. And they couldn't carry their rucksacks or their water, and they used to throw their hands. Yeah. What did, when you came back, mm -hmm. so, when you came back, mm -hmm. what was your next, uh, duty assignment? So, I, I came back in September, early October of, 06 from Iraq. We deployed a, a year prior, so early September of 05. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. And what was your what was your general demeanor? In just in general? Yeah. Fuck. I was so detached from my body and from my that I can't really tell you. Right? If you could tell me. Very alienated and disassociated from the environment. 
because you have to be, right? That's just biology, physiology, yeah. right? And that's one of the things that I really started to learn and understand and see conceptually and then bring it back into my body and feel it, right? And that's what started resetting almost my nervous system. The vagus, the vagus yeah. nerve system. Understanding that and seeing it like, wow, you know what? This, like, wow, this is real and it does happen to people, right? And once I really started to have that realization and see it, I started to almost relive all these memories from Iraq and even explosions too. Like I would just be like meditating or really crying and trying to really bring it in, right? Trying to really lie, you know what? It was really there and it really did happen. Because the mind and the body has a beautiful mechanism to it. Does. Right? Yeah. It's so brilliant. It's beautiful, right? And I also started to thank that mechanism for allowing me to. But it's almost a debt that we have to repay, right? To the body, to the nervous system, to the environment. Really. And once I really started to realize that and settle into that, my entire body just started to just work different. There was a reconnection just to the environment, to myself first, and then to the environment and those around me, right? and my family, and my friends. And it was like I, I was able to see for the first time. Again. Yeah. And so were you but it's still so familiar? Were, were you still enlisted? Oh, no, no, no. This was... This was a few years ago, man. Yeah, yeah. but so when you when you so, arrived back, yeah. So this is this is what happened. So I got back from Iraq September. Yeah, right. And I got out of the army in January. I yeah. Was, I was out, right? So that that so, that so was my right. question. So, like, so you you came back. So my question was, when you arrived back. Mm -hmm. After that first deployment, mm -hmm. like, what was your demeanor upon arriving back? Mm -hmm. And what was your demeanor? Mm -hmm. And then how did that, like, how did you apply that like, without thinking about how you are now? Mm -hmm. How did you apply that then? Not now. How did you apply that then? How did you apply, how did you apply your, your, like, how did you apply your combat experience mm -hmm. to your, to your soldiers? Mm -hmm. How did you apply that to them? Was it positive? Was it negative? But if you, if you're next, I, I think I asked, what was your next, um, what was your next, uh, I can't remember, what, what was your next, uh, not, okay. yeah, so, yeah, like, what, what, what was your, what was your next, yeah. Like, where, where were, where were you going, where were you going to be? Like, what were my plans after I came back? Yeah, right. like, what, what so was, what, what's, what's your next, like, what, what is your, what no, what, objective? No, what, what, what's your next three year, like, where are you? Where are you going to be in three years or five years? What's your plan, basically? No, in the military, you get three year, like, reenlistment or something? Yeah, like, I asked, um, you get three year, like, uh, what is it called? You get three, <laughs> <laughs> you, you get, you get three year contract, reenlistment, reenlistment kind oh, of. Yeah. So you, yeah, so not, 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 not reenlistment, but yeah. it's like you get duties. Uh -huh. uh, that's it. Like where was your where was your next duty station? Oh, right. So so I when see. I so when you came back yeah, no, when no, you no. came back I was like where was your next <laughs> duty station going to be? Okay, yeah, that's okay. it. That's okay. it. 
I said, where was the next duty station going to be? That's it. I said, well, how's that? How's that dick? Must be some. Captain Cox over here. Cox. Are, are you sure you're that? That's, are you sure that's not a bad advertisement? Oh for that shit! Brand? Oh my god, no, yeah. dude. So. so so let me let me ask. So that, so that's it. So the next duty station. So that was it. Is the next duty station is how would how are you going to apply serious, yeah, yeah. legit? Yeah. How were you going to apply mm-hmm. the experiences mm-hmm. from your two thousand five? Mm-hmm. Very, very, very serious combat experiences. Mm-hmm. How are you going to apply those to your next duty station mm-hmm. soldiers mm-hmm. for the next three years mm-hmm. in a productive manner? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he, he upgraded, right? He learned. He up, he, <laughs> then he grabbed a fork. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, like, uh, grabbing the stick. <laughs> like, you came by grabbing the oh, stick. <laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> oh shit, I got caught. Oh my god. <laughs> he's like, he's like, like, like a it. fucking kid who just got caught with his Let hand me turn off the recording. Let me turn off the recording. <laughs> the recording. No, no. no. It's like, it's, 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 you're like a kid with his hand. Caught in the cookie jar. <laughs> Jamil's like, they're in deep conversation. Like, they're not going to see you. Yeah, just, just put some fucking... <laughs> but, and, and just, just, so, like, just, all those lessons, right, it, is, I, I, they have value in my everyday life or everything yeah. I do, right? Yeah. Everything I do, and it's so practical, and it translates yeah. directly to managing teams and running teams, right? And, and in the corporate world, like, dude, it's, it's non-existent at that, like at that level. And sometimes I do share like little tidbits of like stories, right? Obviously not this deep ever, right? But just like man, you know, like just I even tell people just how much I appreciate water because mm. I was like, there was days we were like, there was days that. We were like, fuck, dude, we have a fucking canteen full of water for each man for the next 18 hours. So you guys better fucking conserve it. And the water we had was stale and old and hot, dude. Sometimes yeah. we would drink water and all of like, oh, this is so good. You can make coffee with it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, one day um, our platoon marched back. I don't even know how many fucking miles from executing a mission without water in like 120 oof, plus degree weather. Yeah, it was brutal. After fighting for freaking a week straight. Yeah. Gross. And and yeah, the platoon sergeant was, was, was just like, wow, like the bravery and the fucking honor of these fucking yeah, kids, bro. It, like at that point, at that point, we had lost men, and we had gotten like a had this for seven years. Wow, amazing! Go. We we um cheers. <laughs> I'm like cheers. Hey guys, I, I got some ice. Hey guys, hey come on man. Hey hey. 
So, so, so my, hey guys. Uh, <laughs> I got fucked. Sorry. Can you grab that bottle of tequila? So I share like my stories like that. My, my hey, there's up. some uh, margaritas mixed over there. <laughs> So I like I like share stories at work just to bring people back into perspective, right? And I tell them, you know what? Like we're delivering software here. We're not freaking. We're not in the battlefield. Like yes, people are going to be stressed out, and we have the force, and we want to. Everything we do, we're we're standing up a startup, basically, right? Within a bigger product, uh, organization. So I tell them, of course, we have pressure, we have deadlines, we have what we're doing here ties to to a strategy up here, right? And this is a huge component of that strategy, right? So everyone understands that. So a big part of my job is to tell a story, kind of like what an officer would do, right? Tell his yeah. men and tell a story. This is the vision. This is the objectives. This is how we're being measured. This is, you know, break it down by tasks, squad, right? That's the same thing that There's I do, right? That story. What's it with that story? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, do you want water? I'm down. Right. <laughs> He's like, I thought you would never ask. <laughs> right. So, so like those are all the same things. I don't I know. Should we give him water? Then? <laughs> do, you want, do you want this water? Do you want my water? <laughs> yeah. Go no, first. Do you want water? I want water. <laughs> do you want water? Do you want water? <laughs> so, so, there you go. There we go. So, so Some like, earth water, baby. <laughs> But that's the love and appreciation that I bring A to mm. my to my team, B to the product and the customer that we're serving. And then um the also like the intimacy that I need to have to be able to want to lead at that level, right? I need to understand more than everyone else. I need to tell them, okay, we're gonna do this because X, Y, and Z. I need to tell stories, right? I need to be a visionary too, and I need to be able to communicate to different levels of understanding because not everyone's seen the same thing, right? Yeah. That's one of the hard things of being a leader. And I mean, especially being infantryman in combat, man. What it's are you like, bringing? Wait, so, hold on. Before, yeah, before, before well, we continue, one, one, hold on. Hold on. Before we. One, privilege. Privilege. Yes. Privilege. First first of all, privilege. First of all. And never, ever, never, ever think of my being an officer Mm -hmm. as anything better than what you are or you have been or you've done because you are everything that I look up to and everything, every reason that I joined everything, every reason that I've served. Amazing. Okay? Thank you so much. I'm really humble. Dude, everything. I'm humble. Thank you so much. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Just know that. Okay? Right. Like, Thank literally, you. just know that. I literally fucking kiss your hand, and I'm saying that. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You've fucking given everything other than your life. Other than your life, other than your fucking life, open your eyes, open your eyes, other than your life, Absolutely. and thank you. Thank you. No, it's, thank you. It's very humble. Thank it's you. Really nice. So never thank me again. Thank you. Thank you. That's deep. Thank you. Thank you, my man. Thank you. Thank you, my man. So deep. So deep. Thank so you. Deep. So deep. Let's drink to that. Drink to that. Man, there's so many stories, guys. So many freaking stories. Right? Oh. Yeah, so many stories. Man, so many damn stories. Yeah. Man. Yo. Oh, yeah. Jamil. So, I'm going to put this on Jamil. pause. So, hold on. We all had something to announce. <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to put this on pause, but go ahead, Jack. I don't even know if it's recording. I don't, I don't even know my name. I don't know if it's recording. How old is that? Well. Dip. 
That's my question. <laughs> dip is okay. Dip is gone. <laughs> it's gone. Like it was like two days ago. Oh, gone. Oh, I thought, <laughs> just, I thought, just when no, I was like, talking about. Nah. Oh yeah, actual dip. <laughs> nah, homie, that actual dip is gone. Oh, it was like been gone, homie. <laughs> oh, we should have been overseas if you wanted that oh, dip. See <laughs> Shit. <laughs> If that you want that up. that dip, tell me, dude. I'm curious about this shirt. What what is this? Oh man! Oh, this is a company I Roll Tide. Yeah, Roll Tide. Uh, <laughs> I started yeah a long time ago. Didn't work out, unfortunately. I wish but... I recorded this. Like, I don't think yeah. this recording is not going to go that well. <laughs> no, is it recording? I think so. It's through Zencaster, but I don't oh think yeah, it's... yeah. Why so. I don't know. Yeah, I hope it is. But uh, so, like, let me ask you. Yeah. What? Um. How longer? How long after that? When did you get out? And when did you start the company? That's probably two yeah. better questions. <laughs> yeah. So I I got out of the Marine Corps in December, end of December, two thousand twelve. Okay. I started Relo Base in <laughs> two thousand. 2014? Yeah. Yeah, 2014. Wow. So about two years. After. Two years after. Yeah. And you started it from a problem that you saw that you had. You yeah. Had like yeah. So you had like first-hand experience. Yeah. Well, I just, I, yeah. I, I saw, I mean, too many military service members were moving, in my mind, were relocating and didn't have an easy solution. There were too many problems. Yeah. Too many problems to relocating. And it was too predictable that they were going to relocate. And there were too many predictable problems that were predictable. You all right, man? <laughs> With a predictable <laughs> problem, yeah, yeah, for sure. and so I it's said, we'll "Yeah," start. and so I looked at it and I was like, "Well, how much value? What is it? How much money is in? Is it worth?" And I looked at it and I said, "All right, well, how many VA home loans mm -hmm. are purchased?" And on average, it was like, it was something like 2.3 or 2.4 billion VA home loan dollars, dollars from VA home loans on, on PCA, on just on, just on relocating relocations, relocating. just on relocations. And how big is that problem now? How much money are these? Bigger. Now? Even bigger. And who's solving for it? It's still, it's still <laughs> spread. It's still spread. So 10 years later. Oh, 10 years problem. later. Yeah. 10 years later. So 10, say, 10 years later. 10 years ago, you were working on this problem. Did, yes. Okay. Follow me, Jamil. The problem persists, right? 100%. Like, so like USA USA has created as as close to I wish I had a whiteboard, dude, so I can start dude, whiteboarding. This. Holy shit! I mean, <laughs> not even. I mean, I literally, I, I just said, I wish our walls were whiteboards. I fucking did. <laughs> did. Didn't I just at, say? At, I mean, at work, Sigma. at work, <laughs> I draw diagrams and boxes and squares and rectangles, and, and I tell them. Look at this. Tell me if you understand it. Okay. Any questions? Let's review it now, right? I communicate with fucking data. It's more universal than the yeah. shit that's gonna come out of my mouth. Right? Yeah, for sure, man. And it's and it's an aid that I need even to to make sense out of my projects and what I'm doing, dude. I have to draw yeah. stuff out. Yeah. That's what I'm saying with, with the So here, here with the ideas is, that Jack was saying. It's like here is the okay, so the problem persists. Let's start there, right? The problem persists. Okay, it is. 
it's actually a matter of it's a matter of consistency. It's a matter of consistency. Okay. So let me ask you this. Just it's a matter of consistency. Um, it's a matter of consistency. Okay. Because I am not consistent. <laughs> I am not consistent. And not and I and I know that. And I, there are other things that are at play, have, are there. I'm not, it's hard to, like, be super, super consistent. That's hard. That's hard to say. It's really, 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 really fucking hard to say. It's like heartbreaking to say. It's fucking heartbreaking to say. Because, like, that's always been me. So let me ask you this. I'm with you, bro. Take your time, man. No one's rushing you. I want you. Let's all do this. Follow me, please. No, it's, um, we're, we're here with you. Take your time. I want you to feel your words, feel them, express them. We're here to listen. That's what we're doing. We're listening. Listening yeah. and learning. Those were the two principles, right? Yeah. And who echoed them? Jamil, right? So that's, that's what we're doing from each other, right? Yeah. So the, the words, are I find them and you'll notice I can find the words I can find them super fast sometimes and you'll notice I can find them faster than anyone else and you will also notice sometimes I will not be able to find a fucking word to save fucking anything. That's Keep it the court. Is what's called what is unfortunate and not. You good? Yeah. <laughs> you good? I'm good. <laughs> you good, homie? Bro, I'm going on you. You good, homie? My God. I'll tell you two sides of how to fight. <laughs> there is one side to fight. There is one that is the Marine, that is the forward deployed, that is in a uniform, that is, that is putting rounds down range. Doesn't think, cares only about left, right. Unit. Wakes up every morning. Doesn't matter what needs to be done. Just what needs to be done needs to be done. And that's what needs to be done. It's not heard of. That's what needs to be done. Absolutely. <clears throat> and that's beautiful. Yeah, and it's so universal. Too. And it's so universal. No matter what time, place, yeah, exactly. no matter the environment, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. We could have pictures. It could be. I'm trying uh, to create a. In, in one moment, one moment. And we can share all. And I encourage. And we can, mm -hmm. let's have a round, like round robin. Because I think we should all have round round if I can. Yeah. There is the other side of the coin. That is, rather than that night in saying in on top of that drug lord's 
compound after patrol fucking fighting and sitting with my dudes smoking cigs hanging out waiting to fight the next day knowing that we're all together knowing that we're getting ready to fight another day I saw it on the other side I was in the back of the I was, I was in the back of, yeah, I was in the back of the room at, in, um, it, uh, two, it, two, two, four in near San Clemente and sitting there with 25 incredible or 30 incredible military wives and I was sitting in the back and it was probably Wednesday and they were talking about they were talking about while their husbands are deployed and and during this time, I'm, I'm training combat replacements. During this time, I'm training combat replacements. I'm, I, a seizure. And so I'm not deployable. And so I'm training combat replacements. And so I'm non-deployable. And so I'm back. And, and so I, so I, so I'm, so I'm back. Yeah. And so I'm back. And so I'm, so I'm, I'm back. You're back with all the, back with their wives. And their wives. Yeah. Are un, unbelievably did they they literally fucking showed me what strength is. Yeah. I can imagine. Like they taught me, they showed me what like superhuman strength. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. If you wanna know if you wanna know what like how to fight now learn how to fight how to fight but like how to fight and also take care of your kids while also taking care of your of your parents of your job of your house of doing all this of doing all of this and 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 also and and also and also like try not to go crazy because your loved one your loved one is in combat try not to fucking go crazy like yeah. come on dude this this is when i learned unbelievable this is when i learned that military spouses were the secret, the secret to not just like the most untapped resource, but the most beautiful, the most beautiful, powerful, and like forceful, like. Almost like I'm not joking, like ungodly, like thing that people don't are is like unrecognized. That's what this is. That's what Relo Base. That's what this is, and that's what. And I I mean this, and 
may need to go off record and part part of me was hurt because I think friends of mine started something that believed in the force, the recognition of military spouse. It didn't, but didn't go all in. Yeah. They didn't go all in. Yeah. They didn't go all in. They just like kind of touched it. Yeah. Which is such a disrespect. Yeah. And it's like, that makes me mad. That makes me mad. And it makes me happy that you didn't ask me to help. And I'm thankful for that. But it also, it's like, you should have asked me because I could have helped you because I could have helped you to go all in because I could have helped you. So let me ask you this. Well, one, one is a comment and the other one is a question, right? <clears throat> so my first comment is that because it's not going to work. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. Yeah. 100% out. Yeah. You're, 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 uh, <laughs> hold on. Two things about you, right? You are, you have a very curious mind, right? You have the education, obviously, right? Which, right? So I have a, I have a master's in business. I have an MBA. I took a program, whatever, right? Besides the education, right? Like he's at UFC now. Yeah, ed education is just one thing, right? Like, yeah, theory is great to have, right? And it gives you an advantage over someone yeah. who doesn't really understand it, right? Right. But both can unite at a intersection where experience will eventually teach you all the theory, yeah. without you having to pick up a book, right? Yeah, and you might not be able to connect the dots until you read a book and you're like, "Oh my god, I've if, been doing this if, for if only years, it's, right? if only it's, yeah. if only if it's comfortable with everyone else, you know, <laughs> only if it's comfortable. Like, what I mean by that is like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, tell us something. No, you know yeah. what? I, mean? I want to hear from yeah. you tonight, bro. Yeah, what's like no like, shit. Like, like hey, what's the <laughs> fuck going on with you, man? Literally, Zencaster. Zencaster was like, I got an email. When? When I was like, I'll pull it up right freaking now. Dude, this is such a fucking wonderful conversation. I'm going to get you guys Korean fried chicken. Yeah.